everybody, I'm Charlie Craven and I'm back with another super cool fly pattern for you this month. This one's called the Problem Child and it's in the April-May edition of Fly Fisherman Magazine. The coolest thing about this fly is I'm going to show you how to use a great big soft tackle feather to make a much smaller soft tackle fly. This is a really cool technique and I'm really excited about it, so let's not waste any more time. Let's go tie. Alright, we're about to tie the Problem Child. What I've got here in the vise is a Daiichi 1160 in a size 14 with two 332nd tungsten beads. I've got a purple and a red Umpqua Radiant tungsten bead on there. Now you can tie this in a variety of different sizes and there's also another Daiichi hook, an 1167, that is identical to this just with a black nickel finish and either one is acceptable. Um, I'm going to start some red 14 aught Vivas thread just behind that first bead and I'm going to wrap back to just past the point on the barb. And once I get back there, I'm going to build a little nub of thread. And I'm just going to stack up several turns of thread to make a, a small bump back here. And this bump, while it does help to separate the biot tails that we're about to put in, it's really just for a little hot spot. So I've just made a small nub there, and I'll bump my thread forward just a few turns to get it out of the way. And then I'm going to put just a light coat of Solar as Bone Dry on top of that thread nub. And you want to make sure that you're just on that, that thread nub so you don't glue your thread down that you move forward because we are going to move it back. So I just want to coat that all the way around with a thin coat of Bone Dry. And I'll hit that with my UV lamp. And that just toughens up that thread nub. That'll keep that from fraying later when you're fishing the fly and makes it just a bit more durable. Also adds a little bit of shininess to it. And now I'll unwind the thread back to the front edge of that, that nub. And now I'm ready to tie in my biot tails. And what I'm going to use for the tails are two purple turkey biots. And what I've done here is I've opposed the two biots so that they're curving away from each other. And then I'm going to measure them just short of a shank length long. I'm going to tie these in at the bend by putting them on either side of the hook shank and tilting them just slightly toward me. So you can see right here is square. And I'm going to turn them just slightly toward me. And I'll take a turn of thread all the way around, but I really haven't tightened this yet. Now typically I let this happen in my fingers, but I want you to watch here. Um, once I've got that thread wrap around, as I tighten it, I can square those biots up. And you can sort of tweak them into place a bit. I'm pretty happy there. And then I can tighten those thread wraps coming forward from there. So I've got a nice even split tail just over the top of that nub. If you need to, you can tweak these ends. I think I'm pretty good there. And I'll come forward over those butt ends to just short of that red bead and I'll trim the butts off. Now I'm going to take a piece of 1 100th Mirage uh, lateral scale and I'm going to tie this in just up here behind the bead. I'll catch it, draw it down to length, and wrap back over it all the way back to the base of the tail. So nothing fancy here. I'm going to butt those tails right up to that thread nub. And I'll take that piece of flash and I'll just clip it back here in my material spring so it's out of the way for the time being. Now for the body, what I'll use is, uh, this is Nature Spirit Emergence Stubbing. Um, and it's a, it's a synthetic mix, a mix of different synthetic fibers and different colors. And I've mixed just a tiny little bit of red eye stub into mine. You can see there's just a few little red highlights, and that's just to sort of match up the tones. And I'm going to take a, a small pinch of this. And I'm going to apply this to the thread as, as tightly as I can to build a tapered abdomen. I need just a bit more here. So I want to twist that on tightly, and then I'll begin to build the abdomen. And what I want to do is make the first turn of dubbing back here at the base of the tail, and then work forward from there, sort of building my taper as I go. You can see I can kind of come forward a couple wraps and back up a few wraps, and I'm going to come pretty well right up to the back of that red bead. And hopefully run out of dubbing just exactly where I wanted to. So just a tapered abdomen, nothing special there, a little on the chunky side. And now I'm going to take my piece of tinsel and I'm going to counter wrap this 
just because this is a coarser dubbing, and this will help set it out on top of the dubbing, I'm going to counter wrap the Mirage tinsel right up to the back of the bead, and then I'll tie it off there with several tight turns of thread before I clip it. I've got a couple wild hairs over here. We'll just get rid of those just to clean things up a bit. And then I'll come in and I'll whip finish the thread there. And I can clip that out. Now I'm going to prop the hook up just a bit here. And I'll put my fingers between the two beads and shove my fingernails right in so that that red bead jams right up to the front edge of the abdomen. And I've got just the tiniest amount of space between the two beads at the front. And I'll take my red thread and start it again right in that space between the two beads. And I want to build a good solid thread base and then trim my tag out. Now the whole idea I had on this fly was to, to try to use these beautiful Cock de Leon hen feathers to make a collar on a smaller fly. And the uh, technique I came up with sort of led to the development of this pattern. But really this fly is more about the technique than it is about the exact pattern. You can certainly change the colors and, and mix and match it, but any place you want to use a, a feather with longer fibers to create a smaller collar, uh, this is a good spot for it. So what I'll do here, first I'm going to build a dubbing loop, and I don't need a very long one, maybe two or three inches. I'll bring the thread back up between the two beads, cross it over the two legs, and cinch it down. And then I take one of the legs and I'll put it in my material spring. That just keeps the, the dubbing whirl from twisting my, my thread and my uh, dubbing loop together while I'm trying to place the, the hackle fibers. Now there's a sort of a special trick for, for getting the hackle fibers into the dubbing loop without having to fight with them too much. And you don't need a special tool. You can just use your fingers. And I'll show you that here now. Okay, the trick to getting these CDL hen fibers into the dubbing loop without losing all of them lies in this little pinch of dubbing. And this is a tiny little pinch of dubbing. You can kind of see it compared to the tips of my scissors there. And it's the same dubbing that I used for the body of the fly. What I want to do is take a small pinch of that, set it down on my tabletop, sort of get that aligned here. You can kind of work it around into, into position. And I'm going to take my CDL hen feather and I'm going to pull out a clump of fibers and even their tips so that they're square. I'm now going to take this clump and lay it right down on top of the dubbing and trim those off to my predetermined length, my, my length being dictated by the hook. And I'm just going to cut that off right on top of the, the dubbing fibers. Then I'm going to take my purple feather, and since this is sort of the main color of the collar, I'm going to use a slightly bigger clump. And I'll peel these fibers off. I'll lay these in so that the tips are the same length as the red and come in and trim them to length. And they don't have to butt right up next to each other. I do want their tips even. A little space in between is not a big deal. I'll get rid of those butt ends. And then I'll use my scissor tips to just press that down on top of the dubbing. You can see that's sort of overlapping the dubbing a bit. The dubbing is just a vehicle to make it easier for me to pick these fibers up and keep them together while I go to apply them in the dubbing loop. So the trick to getting this up off the tabletop is just push your scissor blades underneath it and come in and pinch the clump and transfer hands. I can even realign those a bit. And again, I'm not worried about the, the evenness of the butt ends. I can trim those after I've put it into the loop. But I do want the tip ends to remain even. You can see most of this dubbing is going to come out. But that's just the vehicle, so that's going to help me get this from the tabletop here into our dubbing loop. So I'm going to transfer this into my material hand and now we're going to go back to our dubbing loop. So once we've got our dubbing and hackle fibers lined up, we can pick that clump up off the table like so. And I'm going to remove my dubbing loop from the from the spring. And I'll place these fibers along with the dubbing in the loop. Now one thing that I'll usually do is I'll come through on the bottom edge here and you can sort of tap them to square them up a bit. Um, in the case of the two colors here, whatever color you want to be the, the under color of the collar, you should have closest to the hook. So I've lined those up. I'm going to pinch the loop just underneath the, the fibers and I'll spin my dubbing roll. And you don't need a, a crazy amount of spin here. 
but let that twist work through your fingers until those fibers start to radiate around the thread. And you can see most of the dubbing that you put in there comes out. It does add a little bit of a highlight and a little bit of density to the core. Uh, but, but essentially what we've just done is created a, a smaller hackle stem uh, for the feather that we're about to wrap, the feather that we just made. So I'm going to take my dubbing brush and I just sort of run it down the fibers and that just picks out any of the trap dubbing or trapped fibers. You can see that sweeps it back as well, uh, much like a, an old school wet fly collar. And then I use the dubbing roll itself as my hackle pliers to begin to wrap this collar between the two beads. You can see I'll just fold those fibers back after each turn. And you don't need many, two or three. You can see those barbs come just past the point on the barb. And then I'll tie the loop off. And you can see very often it will spin like that as you tighten it down. And that's the twisted thread sort of creeping down inside the recess in the front bead. I'll trim the loop out. Just make a few turns there to anchor that in place. And you can see the, the beauty of that technique, creating that smaller collar uh, with a bigger feather. We've got a, a two-color collar uh, with a little bit of highlighted dubbing in there, and you could certainly use a different colored dubbing. To finish the fly-off, we're going to add two little horns, and this is the same turkey biots that we used for the tail. So I'm going to take two purple biots, and the first one I'm going to tie in on the far side, and I tie these flat. Um, the tip is going to come just short of the, uh, the base of the tail. I'm going to lay it in along the far side of the hook and catch it with a couple of turns. And I'll take the next biot and do the same on the near side. And I want these about the same length. Like so. And again, you can sort of tweak the long ends to, to line those up. Get a few turns to anchor those. Now one thing that I found um, anytime you're tying biots in, it's it's very easy. If I cut these off right now, uh, you'll be tying the fly on on the river, and when you go to tighten your knot down, you'll pull those biots out because they're so slick. So what I've been doing is folding these butt ends back and catching them with a turn of thread on each side, just so we've got a fold in there to anchor that down. Then I can trim those butt ends out right up close. Just a more secure way to, to tie those in. And then our last step is just going to be a little tiny pinch of that same dubbing to build our, our collar behind the bead. I like to overdo this just a, a slight amount um, because I'm going to brush it out. So I'm just using this to cover that thread collar. And I'll whip finish my thread and let it slide off the back edge of that purple bead and tuck in underneath that dubbing. Now here's a slick way to put some resin on those wraps. I'm going to take that working thread and just put a bit of bone dry on it just right up here close to the hook and I'll make two or three turns just to let that resin get on the thread and then I can unwind and I can trim that thread out. So I just used the thread to apply the, the bone dry to those thread wraps underneath. That was after the whip finish. Uh, just makes for a very clean application of the bone dry resin. And you can come in and depending on how shaggy you want your dubbing, you can pick it out with your dubbing brush. Seems my dubbing brush has got more loose fibers than the fly, but we'll pick that out a bit. And we've got the problem child. This fly is just sort of a, a simple attractor pattern. Um, you know, obviously it's got uh, it's reminiscent of a prince nymph, uh, you know, which is, in itself is a great great attractor pattern. Uh, this gives you a little bit more leeway as far as color variations go, uh, and the two beads make it a great dropper fly. It's very heavy; it uh, stays down. Typically, tie it in size 14 and 16. Um, I have tied it as big as a size 8, though, for much larger stones. Um, but really, the the whole idea was being able to use those those beautiful Cop de Leon hen feathers um, that are that are so nice and so webby, um, but unfortunately on the big side for most of our trout flies. Um, by using that dubbing loop technique, we can make those fibers into a much smaller collar um, and put them to use on our regular size trout stuff. I hope you like the technique. I hope you like the fly. Tie some up. Um, it has really been fun to fish. Um, you know, very simple. Not not a whole lot of new technique other than uh, um, how we apply the 
the dubbing fibers into the loop along with the hackle. Um, but give that a try. Play with it a little bit. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next month.